All right, now we have a look at uh, how can we predict the products of chemical reactions. Well, first off, let's re-familiarize ourselves with the types of chemical reactions. In a formation reaction, individual elements join together to form a compound. In a decomposition reaction, just the opposite. A compound breaks down into its individual elements. In hydrocarbon combustion, what you're looking for here is a hydrocarbon made of carbons and hydrogens, and they always combine with oxygen. They make CO2 and H2O, so they're quite recognizable. In a single replacement reaction, we have an item that's by itself and a compound, and what happens is the individual element replaces the other element in a compound. So the A joins with the C and forms AC, and the B gets kicked out. In a double replacement, it's kind of like a country square dance, everybody trades their partners. A and B matches with C and D, and A joins D, and C joins B. The, the thing to remember is that A is the positive guy, and C is positive, B is minus, and D is minus. So it's always a positive with a negative. So if we have a look at, at a few, can we predict what's going to happen? Well, we can if we if we know what type of reaction we have here. If we look at the first one here, C4H10 combines with oxygen. Now, hopefully, you'll look at that and say, hey, that, that's hydrocarbon combustion. Um, and so what are the products we're going to get? Well, we're going to get CO2 and H2O. Now, we should balance these things, of course, to make it work. So uh, if I look at over here, I've got four carbons. So I'll put a four in front of the CO2 and uh, 10 hydrogen. So I'll put <clears throat> five in front of the water and I've got five H2s. Now, if I count the oxygens, four times two, there's eight oxygens here in the CO2 and there's five in the water. Now, eight and five together makes 13. That's an odd number and that causes me a problem here uh, over the oxygen because he's counting by twos. Solution, of course, double up. So put two in front of that, double this, make it an eight, double this and make it ten. And now let's see what happens. Um, so if I look at my oxygen count in CO2, I got eight times two, I got 16 here and 10. That's, that's 26, that's an even number. So half of 26, I put a 13 here, I got 1302. So there's hydrocarbon combustion. Um, the next one, a calcium nitrate with uh, sodium phosphate. Now what's going to happen here? Well hopefully you can see that, uh, I'll get the, the red again here, that calcium is plus two, nitrates minus one, that's why you need two nitrates for that calcium. Sodium is a plus one um, and phosphate is a negative three. So we've got these pluses and minuses going on. So hopefully you can see that this is going to be a double replacement. This guy is double replace and I guess I should have written up in here, but I kind of ran out of room. I should have written up here hydrocarbon combustion. Getting a bit messy, but oh well. Uh, now, trade partners. So the calcium, who was with the nitrate, now connects with the phosphate. And the sodium, who was with the phosphate, now connects with the nitrate. Okay, now let's get these things properly configured. Uh, calcium is a plus two, and phosphate's a negative three. So if you're going to make this uh, compound work, you're going to have to have three calciums and two phosphates, because three times plus two is six, and two times negative three is negative six. So we're playing those... So 3 times 2 is plus 6, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. We're playing with those 2s and 3s again to make the compound. Um, uh, sodium nitrate, is, sodium's a plus 1, nitrate's a minus 1, so that works out well. But uh, now we've got to get the equation overall balanced. And uh, I see that over here, uh, I've got to two phosphates, so I better double up this molecule. In so doing, I end up creating a total of six sodiums. All right, well, I'll put a six in front of this molecule. That'll get me my six sodiums. It also gets me six nitrates. So if I go back to the calcium nitrate, uh, I've got two nitrates there. So if I multiply that by three, I'll get my six nitrates. Chris, I also get three calciums, but that's just fine because I've, I've got three calciums right there. So that double replacement works just nicely. Here I have calcium, a metal, combining with silver nitrate, a compound. So this kind of follows the formula of I've got an A combining with a B, C. So if, hopefully if you recognize that, you'll say, oh, this is going to be a single, a single replacement. 
And so what it looked like, well, we're going to trade partners. So we had calcium as a, as a metal, a solid, and we had silver nitrate, AgNO3, and Ag is a plus one, nitrate's a minus one, so that's perfect. And we're going to trade partners so that now we'll get the calcium with the nitrate and the silver by itself. There's solid silver. Uh, but there's a problem here, folks. You see calcium is a plus two. He's on the second column of the periodic table. Nitrate's a minus one. You're going to have to have two nitrates to go with that calcium. And so that means you're going to have to double up this molecule to get two nitrates. That also means you're going to have to end up getting two silvers. And so we're done. So single replacement reactions aren't too hard to, um, to balance. Magnesium and oxygen. Well, magnesium's a metal. And oxygen is an, is an element. Uh, and so what we're having here is we're going to have two small guys combined together to make something big. We're going to have magnesium solid combined with oxygen gas. And we're going to make the combination of magnesium oxide, uh, which is also a solid. And since magnesium is a plus 2 and oxygen is a minus 2, um, this works out just, just fine. Lastly, I've got AlCl3, or aluminum chloride, and nothing else. So the only thing that can really happen here is we can break this apart into aluminum metal, solid, and chlorine gas, Cl2. Now we have a problem here, of course, because chlorine gas is Cl2, but over in the original compound it was AlCl3. So i got this 2s and 3s going on. 2s and 3s make 6s. So if I put a 3 in front of here, 3 times 2 is 6. And if I put a 2 in front of this molecule, I'll get 2 times 3 chlorines is 6, but I also get 2 aluminums. And that's not a problem because this aluminum is by himself. So these aren't too hard to solve either. Now, from page number 105, we have lead 4 nitrate uh, is placed in a zinc pot. And there's obviously a chemical reaction takes place. You can sort of see a, a picture of it here in the photo. Write it as a word equation, a skeleton equation, and a balanced equation. So the word equation would be lead 4 nitrate combines with, and what's it combining with? It combines with zinc to form, and what's it forming? Well, we're going to trade partners here. Um, so we might actually help us if we sort of stop at this point and say, well, what's the equation here? Lead, Pb, 4, which means it's a plus 4 in lead, nitrate, NO3. Now, nitrate is a charge of negative 1, so you're, you're going to have to have four of these guys to uh, match that lead. And, and this will be aqueous. It's, a, it's in a solution, so we put AQ after it. It combines with zinc. Well, zinc is a solid metal. What are we going to get? Well, we're going to trade partners between the metals. The, the zinc and the lead will swap. So that what will happen is the zinc will combine now with the nitrate, and the lead will get booted out on its own here. So it's going to combine with zinc to form uh, zinc nitrate and lead. Now this equation of ours uh, isn't quite there yet. This is very, very rough. We've got to get things to work out properly. You see, zinc is a negative one compound. Uh, sorry, nitrate's a negative one compound. Zinc's a plus two. So you're going to have to have two nitrates on this zinc to uh, to make this fellow work and, and now that's going to cause a problem because you can see that the number of nitrates uh, with the lead is four but with the zinc it's only two so we're going to have to do something like this um, I'll get a different color uh, we'll need two of these to get uh, my nitrates up to four in so doing I, I've got two zincs but that's okay because since this zinc's by itself I can just put a two in front of that and the leads are, 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 are okay. So there's our word equation. We, we did our skeleton equation, and then we went through and balanced it. The only thing we, we should add is that zinc nitrate is aqueous, and the lead is a solid. And there we are. That really finishes off the deal now. A reaction occurs when silver metal is placed in a solution of gold 3 nitrate, right, a balanced equation. So what do we got here? Silver metal, Ag, solid combines with gold 3 nitrate. Gold is Au, and it's got three pluses, gold 3. Nitrate is NO3, and it's a single negative. Uh, so it looks like I'm going to have to have, um, it looks like I'm going to have, oh, that's, uh, looks like I'm going to have to have three nitrates here 
to make that gold work. All right, well, what's going to happen? Well, the metals will swap. This is another single replacement. So the silver will join with the nitrate, and the gold will come out as solid gold. So this might be a way to, to capture solid gold, perhaps. Uh, this molecule here of silver nitrate, um, if the silver is a plus one and nitrate's a negative one, that's that's good, one of each. But I've got uh, I've got three nitrates over here connected with that gold, so I'm going to have to multiply this molecule by three to get three nitrates on the right hand side, and I'm also going to have three silvers over there. So there's a single replacement, and there it is, all balanced and worked out with the states of matter, except this one. Silver nitrate will be aqueous, and gold nitrate will be aqueous solution. There we go. Um, all balanced, all states indicated, everything's in the right spot.